when you're used to talking about sex and you understand this is something we have to continue working at, then you're not ashamed to call out the things that are that feel like a challenge or the things that feel like they got in the way in the moment. You don't fear that because you're like, all right, well, this is something we always have to work at. So whenever something comes up, I'll address it. Welcome to What I Love About Sex, where some incredible guests and I, Steph Kanowski, will be bringing you the tools for improving your sex life with topics such as sex issues with your partner, sexual self-confidence, premature ejaculation, sexual shame, masturbation, sharing your fetishes, orgasmic pleasure, and more. Sex is still so taboo, and I personally believe that by improving our understanding and communication skills around sex, we can enhance our own self-pleasure as well as deepening our long-term romantic relationships. So listen in, try to stay open-minded, and let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. So today's episode is inspired by a conversation I had in the DMs with a follower of mine who has learned a lot through my content on this podcast, actually. And he had a lot of um, nuggets to share, not nuggets, but his story um, in terms of how he used the content and how helpful it was to improve his sex life with his wife and his marriage overall because of that. And I want to um, I want to read you what he wrote to me. And then as I read you parts of the conversation, I'm going to explain what the six major lessons were that come from his story and that could help every single one of you listening to this. So, and before I dive in, if you are at the place where you feel like your sex communication is terrible, meaning you have a hard time talking with your partner, maybe it's even hard to confront certain sex issues with yourself, so you keep suppressing those issues and avoiding them, and then it makes you avoid sex, it makes you avoid masturbation and your body, so you can't sexually express yourself or feel sexually confident, then definitely, besides checking out more episodes of this podcast, I want you to head over to my YouTube. Um, A lot of you probably don't know I have a YouTube channel, and I've been posting more regularly on there recently. So there are some recent videos I just put up in the last couple weeks that have to do with getting out of your head and being more present during sex and what that means as well as masturbation paired with visualization and how powerful that can be to improve your sex life. So check out the videos because it's just a different style of learning, right? It gives you a visual um, along with the content. And it's more long form than my social media, Instagram, TikTok content. So that is there for you. You can find me at Steph Ganowski and I will link the YouTube link to the show notes. I will post the YouTube link to the show notes of this episode. So diving in, I'm going to pull up the conversation I had with one of you guys in the DMs and read what he wrote me or what you wrote me if you're listening. He said, I have been listening to your podcast for a while now, mainly on how to improve our communication and my goal was to get our relationship better and see where sex goes from there. I read, researched, listened to your podcast, and absorbed everything that I understood. Just by doing that and changing my attitude, she has also changed her attitude, and thinking process has changed our relationship in such a positive way. We enjoy each other now, where we were resentful before. We had a period of time that we didn't have sex in almost three years. Slowly, it came back to about once every four months, and just this last week, it's been every night exclamation. (laughs) That right there proves to me that sex isn't just about having sex. You have to get your mind and relationship right and the rest will fall into place when it's time. Patience and communication is key. So that was the first blurb that he wrote to me and this is lesson number one. Sex is not just about sex in a long-term relationship, right? Because some of you might be like, well, yeah, it is. Like, if I just want to fuck, I can definitely fuck someone and then move on with life. Yeah, that's true. But when you're in a long-term committed relationship and it's no longer just about the fuck, there are 
emotions involved, right? There is the commitment itself. There is other things that get in the way of life that turn on your sexual blocks and shut down your sexual accelerators, right? So there are all these things that happen and you do have to start truly believing that, all right, sex is no longer just about sex. Sex is about my my connection with my partner. If there is no romantic connection that is comfortable and frequent, then sex will most likely not be comfortable or frequent. That's really what it comes down to. And if you can see it that way, then you can realize that, all right, if I want to fix or work on my sex life and improve it, I have to first improve my romantic connection with my partner. What does that mean? Well, hmm, when we were feeling really connected, this is what we did together. This is how we talked to each other. This is how we touched each other. This is how we kissed each other. And you get familiar with that that part of your relationship that started off the romantic spark that led to a sexual relationship. And just getting simple, simply just getting clear on that history that you've had together at one point in time. And it's okay if you never had it too, but that's a really good place to start. And if you've never had it, and even if you have had it and you're reflecting on this stuff, the next step is always after reflection to go to your partner and acknowledge this, like actually saying something like, hey, I realize that, you know, we kind of fell off with our romantic connection a little bit. And what do you think about us getting that back on track so that we could feel like a romantic couple again, or so that we can, you know, feel intimate again, or so we could feel more connected, however you want to word it, right? Every couple taught, um, (laughs) every couple talks differently so you're gonna have different language right some people say making love I have never said that before I don't resonate with that phrase personally right some people do so some people call their wife babe or they have another endearing term they call her such as love or hun right so always find the wording that you use when I give you these examples that makes sense to your relationship because it's your language. It's something you would say um, or something you've said in the past so that it's familiar to her. So when you acknowledge this, don't feel, I, I know it's gonna feel awkward and you're probably like, oh my God, that would be the weirdest thing to bring up our romantic relationship just like that, like an elephant in the room. But guys, there's no comfortable way to bring up sex if sex has been absent. You're not going to find a comfortable way. And a lot of you are going to feel like, oh, it's not the right time. I got to find the right time to talk about this. There's not going to be a right time. (laughs) I hate to break it to you. But you have to just go in and realize that, all right, this is going to be fucking awkward. (laughs) But like, if I want to get my sex life back and I want to get my partner to realize that I realize we're off here, the only way to do it is to bring it up uncomfortably because that's the whole problem here. That's why you're not having sex because sex is uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable as an act and that's because it's uncomfortable as a verbal topic when it comes to communication. So if you can't talk about sex because it's not comfortable, then somebody's got to start the conversation to make it comfortable. And since you're the one listening to this podcast, it's got to be you. <laughs> um, but, but just, you know, giving you hope that this, this guy who reached out to me, he did it, you know, and he wasn't having sex for three years. And then it slowly started coming back because of him improving his communication by listening to this podcast and taking the uncomfortable action to start talking about sex again so he could have sex again within his marriage all right so sex is not just about sex sex is not just something where it's like all right i gotta get my sex life back let me like let me just do these few moves on her and then they should work no it's not about moves it's about connection And to understand connection, you have to talk to her about the topic. You have to talk to her about what connection means for you guys. You have to understand, okay, what does it mean for us to feel romantically connected? 
And by simplifying this whole thing, if you were to just go to her and ask her, you know, first of all, call out the elephant in the room, be like, hey, I realize, you know, we're not as romantic as we used to be. We're not as connected as we used to be in a, rom- in a romantic way. And I would love to get that back. What do you think? And she's like, yeah, I guess that would be nice. Then you're like, well, what does it mean to, for us to be connected? Like when we're connected, what's different about us? Like, do we hug more? Do we kiss more? Like, what do you think? What comes up for you? And you brainstorm this together. And when you get answers from her mouth, like, I always say that. I say that so weird when you get answers from her mouth. Like, where else would the answers come from? <laughs> when you get answers from her, um, then it's... It's like it has to come from her because if she's saying something like, well, I used to feel really connected when you would take me on date nights and we haven't gone on date nights, then it's like, aha, okay, cool. That's an answer. And a lot of guys would would hear that and get defensive and be like, yeah, well, I can't take you on date nights because we don't, we're not making the same money we made. Like, you know, I've been stressed with work, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. It's not about that. You can have a date night in the house for free (laughs) with a box of mac and cheese if that's what you need like you can play a game that can be date night you know so don't don't get ahead of yourself try not to get defensive try to ask her these questions just to get answers and those answers are your friends that's good if she's giving you any type of answer you won congratulations seriously like that's a really good thing So try to not, you know, get ahead of yourself and get defensive about the answers. Be grateful you're getting answers because you could use those to help your sex life. That's the key, guys. So anyway, let's move. I could go on and on about this topic because there's so much here. But overall, sex is not just about sex in a long-term relationship. you got to get your connection right. And then sex will come naturally. All right, so continuing on this conversation with this guy that I was having, um, what I said to him next was, uh, I'm proud of you, blah, blah, blah. You're right, sex is never just about sex. And then I said, and I've been saying this in my stories in regards to my health, that sex is not linear, Like just as, you know, I've been saying a lot, I've been talking a lot about overcoming my surgery or just healing from surgery and feeling like one day I, you know, notice all of my symptoms are gone and I'm like, holy shit, I feel amazing. And then the next day I'm very fatigued and I just want to sleep all day. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I thought I was better. I thought I was getting better. What the hell? (laughs) Like, and then the next day I'm feeling good again. And so... I I talked to this girl who also had explant surgery. She got her fake boobs removed. And she was like, yeah, it's not linear. And I I feel like a lot of videos out there are showing that like women are just getting better and better every day and every day is better. But I have my ups and downs. But in the long term, like if I think about it long form, yeah, then I am getting better every day. But that doesn't mean there's going to be obstacles in the road that make me double think that and question you know, oh, why is this happening? I thought I was better. So it's the same with sex, all right? Like, if, um, like, sex is not linear. Your sexual progress and your sexual, your sex life with yourself or and or with your partner is not always going to be improving, improving, improving all the time. It's not always going to be even good all the time. There's going to be bumps in the road. There's going to be times when, you know, I I said to this guy, I said, there will be weeks like this one where sex is every night and that's awesome, but there will be weeks where it's just not there. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. And a lot of you guys panic when this is the case. Like I've had clients who I got them, I helped get them to the point where they're having sex very consistently. And then they have a week where they only had sex once that week. And they're like, I don't know what happened. We were making such good progress. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, let's create some context here. Like, why do you think it happened once this week? Let's make sense of it and see, you know, why this is. Oh, well, we were really busy with the kids. The Three of the kids got sick. And then, you know, she wasn't feeling that great. And I had my work thing come up that caused a lot of stress. And we weren't able to go on date night because of A and B. And there's always... The context has a lot to do with it, right? Because then it's like, all right, were you still 
And, and then I'll ask him, tell me the ways that you were still emotionally and romantically connected, even though you guys only had sex one time. And he'll say, well, we, we are still kissing every day. Um, we had a few good conversations just about what's going on in life. And we had a glass of wine together and she kind of vented and it just felt good to feel like, you know, we were there for each other. And when he looks for it, he finds the ways that he's maintained connection, even though there was no actual or there was sex one time. Right. But there are still all these ways to connect. So I said to him, don't worry for a second and don't go into panic mode about the actual sex itself as long as you're still communicating and you're still connecting with each other because that's all that matters and it's normal to have weeks where you they're just totally different from the week before and when it comes to sex and you can't panic as long as the connection is not totally off if the connection is totally off then it's like all right, how can I be more mindful of connecting with her? Because connection is definitely off and this is most important. Otherwise, sex will definitely not happen. All right, so make sure you're, you're maintaining the connection with each other in a romantic way and you're good. Just know that sex will come back naturally and it will increase naturally. There will just be those weeks where you just don't have it as much because of outside circumstances you can't always control. <laughs> All right, so that was lesson number two. Sex, sex confidence, sex frequency is not linear. And um, I do want to mention also with lesson number two that your sex confidence, like say you're not in a relationship and you're like, I am trying to work on like my own shame or my body image or, um, you know, things that are just going on in my head that are actually preventing me from having a partner and having sex. So if that's you and you're like, sometimes I feel amazing and then I have a week where I feel like shit and I'm like, what the fuck happened? I want you to also not panic and just try to look at, and that's interesting. That's kind of a key thought. Like don't panic, don't freak out. Don't get anxious so quick, to, so soon before you've actually thought about what's going on and why you're here. Um, so there are also, for you single guys, and you guys working through your own shit, there are going to be times where you feel really confident and then they're gonna, there might be a week where you feel like it falls apart. And what you want to keep in mind is, all right, it's not linear. These feelings of sex confidence are not linear. Like they're going to go up and down and that's okay. And what's most important is that I remember um, the most important things about what I need to know when it comes to my sexual shame when it comes to my negative body language. Like, what are the reminders I tell myself to stay on top of these things in a way that promotes confidence and at least keeps me neutral? Like, if you can at least, if you're in a negative place, if you can at least go back to that neutral place, then you're good. You know, so if you're having a really shitty day and you're talking down to yourself and you're getting really anxious, ask yourself, what can I do to get to a neutral place when it comes to how I'm feeling sexually maybe that neutral place is you purposely going to the mirror if it's about your body image and just being like all right there here are three parts of my body that i'm okay with that are okay like i wouldn't i wouldn't have to trade them like they're pretty good they're all right and then literally name them out loud that's an action of you getting back on track with at least being neutral when it comes to body language, right? You're taking action on it. If it's around sexual shame, maybe it's a quick journaling. You set your timer for 10 minutes and you journal for 10 minutes around why you're feeling what you're feeling at the moment, why you think that thought came up, and then how you would respond if you were talking to your best friend. That's a way to at least get back to a neutral ground. So if you can get back to that neutral place, then chances are the next day will be easier to get to that good place and get you back up, okay? But once again, remembering it's, it's, there's going to be bumps in the road. It's okay. It's normal. All right, so I'll continue on with this conversation from the guy in the DMs. So the next thing he said was, yes, it's hard work but it's also work that we have to continue to keep working at. 
And this is lesson number three. You have to keep working at it. Um, but it does get easier to keep working at it. And sometimes it even becomes fun and doesn't feel like work when you stay on top of the maintenance of working at it. Because you become so comfortable and so real with each other and trust becomes so strong between the two of you. So it's like, all right, if I have any issues, I could just bring it up to her. All right, if I, if I feel anything weird, I could just say it to him. And we start thinking more in this like more lighthearted way where it's like, oh, it's not a big deal. And when you're used to talking about sex, that's the go-to way of communicating. You feel something's off or you have a concern or you didn't like what you just did in bed and you're able to say it quick. Quickness is the key to getting an answer quick and getting a resolution quick so you could get right back to comfortability. When you're used to talking about sex and you understand this is something we have to continue working at, then you're not ashamed to call out the things that, are, that feel like a challenge or the things that feel like they got in the way in the moment. You don't fear that because you're like, all right, well, this is something we always have to work at. So whenever something comes up, I'll address it. Now, on the other hand, if you're not used to doing that, You're not used to seeing it as something you have to consistently work at and you have this pressure where it's like it should be good and there shouldn't be any issues and then if an issue comes up, you most likely are going to suppress it, you know, hold it in, not say anything, push it aside, assume everything's fine and not talk. And when you do this, it bottles up, guys. Like you don't realize I have a client of mine who's been bottling up I mean, I have multiple clients, like basically all my clients, I find that they have been bottling up certain thoughts um, or certain issues in their relationship or certain thoughts with with themselves if they're if they're single. And by not taking action on these thoughts or not finishing these conversations that they started or not having that conversation with their partner about that thing that's been bothering them for years. They're creating this bubble of anxiety deep down in themselves. So their behavior in a romantic way is all coming from this bottled anxiety. So there's there's always a tinge of anxiety on everything they do when it comes to their sex life because they suppress this thing. They keep trying to, it's kind of like, if I could think of a metaphor, it's kind of like um, holding one of those beach balls underwater, like trying so much to hold it under, even though it wants to just pop up to the surface. And when you're spending all this energy to hold down the ball, you have less energy to play with the ball. (laughs) This is probably a horrible analogy. (laughs) But you know what I mean? Like that's, you're using a lot of energy to suppress is what I'm saying. (laughs) I always suck at analogies. Um, So you're using, you're wasting energy that you could be using towards being a good sex communicator. So forget that, forget suppressing, don't hold the ball down, like let it come up and surface so you could deal with it and you can talk about that thing with your partner and you could finish those unfinished conversations and you could get that, you can address that insecurity in yourself that needs to be told to someone, whether it be a therapist or your best friend or someone, just to get it out. Shame can't survive the light. So when there's a lot of shame Or if there's a lot of uncertainty or guessing games, you got to bring them to the surface and it's going to help you so much. You're going to feel such a sense of relief where you're like, oh, fuck. Okay. Now I have like, I feel like I have all this mental bandwidth to like actually deal with stuff and actually be in the present moment when I'm having sex now instead of having this lingering anxiety. And you don't even realize it after a while that it's, you know, you're not consciously thinking about this thing, but because you've suppressed it for so long, your body gets used to and adapts to this anxious behavioral uh, communication um, because of that suppression. So if there are any, is the, if there's anything that you need to bring up to your partner, do it. Do it for your own sake um, to just get you in a more relaxed place and to help you become a better communicator simply by unlocking or unleashing whatever you're holding back. So anyway, 
lesson number three is you have to keep working at it. And when you understand you have to keep working at it, you don't bottle things up. You say them, you say them quickly, and then you resolve them quickly. And then you're both back on the same page and you're continuing to have sex. This is what maintenance looks like. There are still problems. There are still problems in the most healthy sex relationships. There are still problems in the healthiest relationships that have been the long term, the longest relationships out there. They still have problems, the same amount of problems. It's just that they handle them quickly and they handle them with an empathy and a love for each other. They handle them like they're on the same team with this person. And when you're used to working at your sex life and your romantic life, then it's easy to do this because you're continuously handling things. You're not suppressing anything. So actually more problems come up when you're in this more successful place of handling things together. Okay, so moving on to the next part of the conversation with the guy in my DMs. So he said... Her actually wanting to have sex has opened a whole new side of her that I never in my life would have thought she would have. I won't get into detail because you may not want to hear them, but for instance, she never liked toys, and now she is sending me things she is finding and asking me what I think about it. At first, I kind of took it as I wasn't enough for her, but after I thought about it, they might be, they might be what we need because she gets right to that edge where it feels really good for her, but she can't get to the big O. She gets so close, so she can't figure out why this is. But in addition to all that, thank you for sharing your knowledge and being so approachable. He also said, I finally told my wife about you and your podcast. I was afraid she wouldn't approve, but now she asks me if you have any episodes on our situation. (laughs) I love that. I love when guys are finally able to share that they're learning from me or from anyone and that their partner's like oh cool let me in on it (laughs) because we all need help here right myself included it's just we we have a hard time helping ourselves um and then uh so I want to finish off the last thing he said before I complete the next three lessons so he said the sexual comfort is higher than it's ever been between us She actually masturbated in front of me for the first time ever. She has touched herself before, but this was full-on masturbation. And to touch again on the toy situation, I was very nervous about it. I was turned on about it, and I then realized that she was wanting me more involved, so that was a good feeling. I bought toys before, very mild toys, but they literally stayed buried in the drawer, and she wanted nothing to do with it. So it's almost surreal that now she has a car on Adam and Eve with the things she likes and also things she wants me to try. It's exciting, and I know it sounds like I'm a kid on Christmas morning, but this connection that we have at this time or this moment is what we needed for so long inside and outside the bedroom. Ah, love it. All right, so really cool, right? And this is possible for all you guys. Like, keep in mind, this was a guy who didn't have sex for three years, and then he took the actions that I talk about in this podcast. So he took my free content. We never even had a call. So that was another thing he mentioned in there. Like, I know we never had one-on-one calls, but I appreciate so much what you've taught me and the, the content you put out, something like that. So that's really cool to know that, you know, even if you guys can't afford coaching or you, you don't want to invest the time or energy into coaching, you could still do all of this on your own time with my free content and see massive results in your sex life and in your relationship as a whole. So going back to the lessons, based on the last segment I've read from this guy, um, lesson number four is sex comfort and sex safety in a relationship opens you up sexually, especially women, because There's a lot more in general, right? I'm generalizing here. There's a lot more hesitation and hiding sexuality with women than there than there is in men. Um, There's there's just a lot more like sexual suppression and hiding because women are not taught to be, you know, for so long it was like, please your man, like sex is about pleasuring your man. And there are sadly a lot of women who still act like that. Like they they don't enjoy the sex they're having. They just feel like a hole for their partner's dick to pound. It's really sad. I hear from a lot of women that they do actually feel like a sex toy. And it's like, okay, what's the point 
and even having sex if you feel that way. And it's like, oh, well, it just gets him to stop nagging. And that's not okay um, for either partner because she shouldn't be, um, in this in this example I'm randomly giving, this is just a random example, um, she shouldn't be suppressing herself to the point where she is engaging in an act that's supposed to be pleasurable, but she's not feeling pleasure. She's just doing it to shut up her boyfriend or husband, right? Like that's not fair to her. It's also not fair to him. And um, that's not what sex is supposed to be. And that just puts a, a damper on sex as a whole, but also changes the definition of sex. It makes it something that that is negative and that's actually distancing and separating you as a couple versus bringing you together, which it's supposed to do. So when there is sexual comfort and safety in a relationship, meaning in this connection building that I've been talking about in this episode, that's what leads to an opening of sexual exploration and interest and curiosity and actually wanting to try things. Like if we go back to the example um, of this guy who's been telling me his story in the DMs, he got his, had the patience and the consistent communication to help get his relationship on a level where they were communicating so frequently that it became comfortable. And because of that comfortability in their communication about their relationship as a whole, about their romantic, the romantic side of their relationship, about their connection together, and then having sex more frequently while keeping that consistent communication, it became this new safety zone. They ex- they extended their sexual um, safety, uh, how do I put this? They extended their, their comfort zone when it comes to sex. They made it bigger. So it's like, okay, at first we were just comfortable with this. Now that we're so comfortable talking and we know we can face any challenge, um, you know, maybe I'm just speaking for them there, but like we can open up our, our sexual uh, comfort zone now where we're more likely to try things that seem a little bit riskier than they did in the past. Now they don't seem so risky. They don't feel so risky because we're so comfortable with each other, right? So now that she's opened up and she's comfortable talking about sex with him, she's more curious about her own orgasms. She's more curious about like, hey, if we can do this and have fun and it feels really good and it's actually connecting us more, what if we tried this? Like this might connect us even more or simply this might be really fun. I'm ready to do this now, right? So a lot of you guys listening may feel like, oh, my my wife or my girlfriend would never be open to anal. She would never want to have a sex toy. She would never want to do this. Don't say never, okay? Because you can go from having no sex in your relationship, the same partner you have right now, to three years later in this example, <laughs> experiencing toys and asking questions about things where maybe you never thought your partner would ever ask or be curious about. All right, so it's really a matter of warming up the relationship and getting really, first of all, curious about your connection so that you can build on your sex life, all right? And that safety and connection is what opens up to sexual exploration. This is why there is um, BDSM, people who are involved in BDSM activity, have stressed how comfortable and safe they feel in the BDSM relationships that they that they grow and nourish and keep because there's so much communication due to the need to keep boundaries around this the actual safety like the physical safety right so they have to create such a high level of emotional safety so that the person is physically um feels physically safe doing all these things that are actually risky to the physical body, right? So hopefully that just made sense in the way I worded it. (laughs) But sexual comfort and safety in a relationship opens up people to a higher level of sexual expression and sexual exploration. The The fifth lesson is a woman wanting toys and especially wanting to use the toys with you is a great sign. And 
I would encourage your woman to use toys by herself before even using them with you, if she's comfortable with that. Maybe she's more comfortable using them with you first, that's fine. But use it. her wanting to use toys or being interested in toys is actually a step towards exploration, not a step towards leaving you, okay? <laughs> if, if she's bringing it up to you, right? Now, if you find toys in her drawer and she's never talked about them before and you guys are never having sex and you can't talk about sex, that's a different story. That means she's most likely using toys because she's not comfortable in your romantic relationship, but she still wants to get off. And that's her go-to for getting off because she's not comfortable in your sexual relationship together. All right, that's a different scenario. If your woman brings up toys to you and says, hey, I'm interested in trying this. What do you think? Like, what toy do you think I should get? Don't ever feel ashamed about that. Don't ever feel like it's a regression for your sex life. If she's bringing that up to you, it means, hey, babe, I'm trying to explore and get a little bit more into my sexual expression and even my sexual kinky side. Um, I want to feel more comfortable sexually. I know toys could help. I want us to have more fun by involving some newness into our sex life together to make it better. These are all good things. All right. So I and like I said, I would encourage you to encourage her to use sex toys between the two of you, but also by herself. All right, because when a woman can explore by herself and she feels safe to do that and she even feels encouraged to do that, then watch out because when she comes to you, it's going to be her on a new level of wanting to explore and feeling more comfortable in her body, feeling sexier. Like when you're, and this is why I have guys practice their masturbation practice and be more present and actually enjoy it more and get more familiar with their arousal and their desires before they work on sex with their partner. So I do this because when you have no spectators, meaning like there's no one else in the room, there's no one there to put any sort of pressure on you. Even if you have a good partner who you don't necessarily feel puts pressure on you, there's still a certain amount of pressure with them being in the room because you have to pay attention to them, right? Like you're not fully just zoned in on you. There's an obvious person in the room. So it's not the same as you being just like able to let go completely. So for you to encourage your woman to put herself in a space where she can completely feel comfortable letting go and then find safety in that completely letting go, Then she's like, oh my God, that felt amazing. Like, holy shit. I didn't think my body could get there. I didn't think my body would do that. And I was too afraid to try it with my partner. But like, now I tried it and I could do it. So let me go to him now and share it with him. All right. That's how you want to think about healthy masturbation and couples um, encouraging their partners to masturbate in a healthy way. So I encourage this for men. It's important for you to continue masturbating regardless of having sex with your partner. Have a healthy masturbation practice where you're mindful, right? Like you're in it. You're thinking about your own desires. You're focused on your body. You're experimenting with your body. You're maybe trying to stimulate new areas before you even join your partner with that. That's totally fine and healthy and we have to take the stigma out of that. Same with women. Women, especially because the orgasm gap is so big and there's about 70, meaning there's about 70% of women who actually find pleasure and reach an orgasm during sex, I should say, orgasm during sex, and about 90% of men reach an orgasm during sex. So that's a big gap, right? And the reasons, there are multiple reasons why this gap is, but to have a woman and to encourage your woman to masturbate and get in touch with herself sexually and feel very comfortable there is so important and essential to her exploration and comfort level with you. So encourage it, encourage the toys. When she brings toys up to you, that's an amazing sign. Like get excited about that, don't get intimidated. There's no reason to be intimidated, all right? A toy, a piece of plastic, silicone is never going to replace your actual penis and your body and the emotional connection that she's built with you. She does not have that with the toy. It is not the same thing, it will never, It will just never be, like, unless your relationship is shit and there's no communication, she will not want to use a toy instead of you. Um, But then there are, you know, and there are also times when it's just she's exhausted or she just wants some alone time and she prefers the toy. Like, let her do that. That's okay. That means she's taking me time. 
All right. It doesn't mean she prefers the toy over you. All right. And then, <laughs> so that was lesson number five. And finally, lesson number six is if your woman has a hard time getting to an orgasm, this is basically what I've been saying. Encourage her to masturbate. And, and then like, as you encourage her to masturbate and you encourage her maybe to get a certain toy to help with, to help promote um, that orgasm and get her used to having orgasms, um, ask her how she feels most relaxed. Like, like, babe, when you're at your most relaxed, what it, what's happening? Like, how do you, what do you need to feel the most relaxed physically? And that might mean a really slow massage. That might mean a half hour where she's just laying by herself listening to music. Like, you're not even involved, right? Like, you have to ask her, like, and don't let her, whatever answer that comes out of her mouth, that's the truth for her, okay? So you don't want to judge it. You don't want to judge her. This is about helping her find her re- her place of deep relaxation so that she can find deep pleasure when you start having sex, all right? So maybe at this point, if she's having trouble getting to an orgasm, it's about enhancing the foreplay, where it's zoning in on, all right, how can we have at least 30 minutes of foreplay? And should I be there for the entire time Um, in terms of helping her relax? Like maybe it's 10 minutes where she's just laying by herself, thinking about you and her sexually. And then after 10 minutes, you come in and then you start giving her a massage or you, you have like this hot oil that you're rubbing on her or you're just laying next to her, like stroking her hair, talking to her about you know something a certain way to help her get really relaxed and then slowly turned on right that is the place where a lot of men feel intimidated being is the slow sensual place when really that's what most women need plus clitoral stimulation okay so that slow sensual invitation to sex to being fucked and pounded and um you know, if it gets to that place, what's what's likely to get to that place of like intensity fucking is starting off with the slowness and the stillness and the caressing and the sensual and, you know, the the buildup. Like so many women need that buildup and too many guys feel like, oh, I got to be a man. I just got to go in and fuck her. But no, that's not what her body craves that's not how she gets to the point of actually craving a hard fuck what gets us to the point for the majority of women to actually feel pleasure being fucked like to have our brains fucked out (laughs) to have our brains fucked out (laughs) to fuck her brains out and for her to enjoy that means there has been a certain amount of buildup and tension so if that tension is not present if that has not happened then you just going in and fucking her right away is not providing her pleasure. So don't be the guy that's afraid of sensual touch and slowing slowing things down and slowly building it up. Don't be afraid of that. Drop the ego. Throw the fucking ego out the window because there's too many guys afraid of giving a woman exactly what she wants and needs to feel full pleasure, okay? Um, this is what most guys do. So that's why I'm really stressing this. Like there are a lot of women who can't get to an orgasm because they feel pressured and like the sex just happens way too fast, way too soon. And that doesn't work for the female body. Plus you just penetrating her also does not work for the majority of women. Okay, she needs clitoral stimulation. Even women who enjoy vaginal penetration and can come from vaginal penetration are still getting a certain amount of clitoral stimulation. That's what a lot of guys don't realize. They're like, oh, if you fuck her right, she'll be able to come through her vagina. No, no. Every woman is experiencing clitoral stimulation from the inside and the outside. And there are women with, like, the vagina, inside the vagina, does not have a ton of nerve endings, guys. The vagina is not the equivalent to the penis. The clitoris is. All right. Biologically speaking, we have the same parts when we are first formed as humans. And these parts 
form in, into different shapes and that determines our gender, right? So the parts may form into a penis or these parts may form into a clitoris. So the clitoris is the equivalent of the penis, all right? So psh, hope that blew your mind right there. And I hope it makes you realize that the sensation that is in the penis is equivalent to the sensation that is in the clitoris. So if you are not paying attention to the clitoris as much as a woman pays attention to your penis during sex, then you are not on the same page sexually. You are not receiving the same amount of pleasure, all right? You have to pay attention to the clitoris. And you also have to not rush into things and think that life is a porno. It's not. There needs to be a buildup. If there is not a buildup, you need to create a buildup and help her get there. You need to help each other, right? This isn't your job. I'm just saying from the male perspective, if you're going in and you're just like trying to fuck her brains out right away, she's not enjoying that most likely, all right? So you want to make sure you're, you're on the same page. And especially if you have a woman who's a little insecure or doesn't know her body as much, she's not going to be the one to tell you this. She's not going to have the courage or the awareness or the education to be like, babe, I need to have slow foreplay to have some build up to get to the point of really craving your cock. She's not going to know that. So that's why I'm telling you that. Many women sadly are not aware of this because they're not exploring themselves they're not exploring their body and they don't understand that this is what their body takes to feel full pleasure. A lot of people, men and women, don't understand the, the importance of relaxation before arousal. You can't just dive into arousal if you're not relaxed first. So that also helps a lot with the buildup. And that's why I stressed before the, the importance of relaxing. You know, if you have a woman who has trouble getting herself to an orgasm, how can she relax before you start the arousal process, before you dive into the foreplay? How can you get her, help her get her body and mind relaxed? And, you know, she has to help herself do this too. But overall, if you have a woman having trouble getting to an orgasm, then to encourage her to masturbate is the best thing. Because like I said, it takes any external pressure away she could be by herself she can learn to you know be comfortable with the size that she makes with the moan she makes how her legs twitch how wet she gets or maybe how not wet she gets and she realizes she needs some lube and then that's a new thing she discovers we're like holy shit i can get so turned on so much quicker when i use lube um so there's little things that she can learn about herself and it gives her space to think about you know, the most sensual thoughts she can think and maybe start caressing her body. And maybe she finds that when she caresses her body and she squeezes her nipples, that heightens her arousal. And she's like, oh my God, that feels really good. Or maybe she puts ice cubes on her nipples and she would feel too intimidated to try that with you. But by herself, she tries it because she can stop it right away if she doesn't want and she doesn't have to feel weird about it. So just notice how much more comfortable a woman can be exploring herself sexually without you in a very good way because this is her building her confidence and building her sex relationship with herself. And if she doesn't have a solid sex foundation or comfortability with herself, chances are she's not going to bring comfortability to you. So that's why you want to encourage this. You want to encourage her understanding her body by herself. And if she really is uncomfortable with that and she's like, I would rather with you, like I would rather learn with you, then great, help, help her learn to get, like learn together if she's really, you know, adamant about that. But, but yeah, it's just, there's, there's a lot of benefits that could come from masturbation. Do not fear her masturbating. You shouldn't fear masturbating yourself. It's important for the two of you. And then when you come together, psh, you share what you learned <laughs> and it's a great thing. And um, toys are helpful as well for the two of you and together. So don't be afraid of any of this. Don't be intimidated about it. Just use it all and um, and you will improve your sex life. So yeah, Whew. okay. Hope these, hope these lessons helped you. I'm just gonna do a recap of the lessons. The first lesson is sex is not just about sex in a long-term relationship. So get your connection right and sex will come naturally. Lesson number two, 
sex, sex confidence, sex frequency, it's not linear. There's gonna be ups and downs and that is totally normal. Lesson number three, you have to keep working at it, all right? And the more consistent you are in working at it, the easier it is to maintain. Lesson number four, sex comfort and sex safety in a relationship opens you up sexually, especially women. It leads to you wanting to explore when you feel emotionally and sexually safe with your partner. You want to try more kinky shit. Not that you have to, but you just want to open your mind a little bit more when you're super comfortable. All right, lesson number five, her wanting toys or sex toys with you is a great sign. Do not fear it, don't be intimidated by it, it's great. And lesson number six, if she has a hard time getting to an orgasm, encourage her to masturbate. And when she's with you, ask her how she feels most relaxed. And don't judge any of this, this is about pleasure. So just be there for her, try to understand her, and help her get to that point of feeling as good as she possibly can, and you as well, all right? So I hope that was helpful, guys. And I just want to give a shout out to the man who allowed me to share all of this information, even though I'm keeping him anonymous. um, He did give me permission to share everything that he wrote to me and to expand on it via podcast. So I hope this uh, helps him even further and hopefully his wife as well, if she's listening. So guys... Uh, Don't forget to check out my YouTube, like I said, at Steph Ganowski, because there is some more content on there that is long form and has my face, if you prefer learning visually. And um, it's really just my face. It's not like visuals, (laughs) but uh, vaginas or anything. But, But yeah, and then also my sex meditations is out and it's helping a lot of guys to feel more in tune with themselves sexually and to learn about themselves overcome their shame, um, feel better about their penis, about their size, about how they have sex, improve their their confidence, their edging. So go check out Sex Meditations as well. That, That is also in the description of this show. So have an amazing morning, evening, or night, wherever you are in the world, and I'll talk to you soon. I hope this episode helped you. If it did, I would love for you to leave me an iTunes review. It would mean the world to me. You can also screenshot your favorite episodes and tag me on Instagram at Steph Ganowski. And before I go, remember, your sex life is as good as you make it out to be. Until next time.